All right, welcome back to the show, watched by more Ferengis than any other SF Vortex. We have made it down to the war room, and joining me today, we have Donna Leto, writer for the syndicated Highlander, the series, and a newcomer to the war room. And also two War Room alums are here, Robert Meyer Burnett, Sci-Fi Universe's Sci-Fi Critic at Large, and he is a genre film editor, and Michael Logan, critic for TV Guide and Sci-Fi Expert Gang. Welcome. Let's get to my first topic. It has to do with the Voyager cliffhanger, and we have a couple of different opinions. Let's get to them. The first is from Vortex viewer Holly Benson. She writes, Voyager needed a ratings boost, so they create an enemy which is worse than the Borg. Why? The Borg are bad enough, and if the writers were creative, we'd have a great storyline dealing with Voyager's progress through Borg space. However, Melissa Carpenter disagrees. All I have to say about this year's cliffhangers is Scorpion. It is by far the best cliffhanger I ever remember seeing in the world of Trek, let alone any other science fiction show. Okay, that's it. It's open for debate. Donna, do you agree? Thumbs up or thumbs down? A uh, qualified thumbs up. I'm not quite as happy as your last correspondent about the episode, but I think it opens up a lot of promise for next season's um, episodes, and I just hope they follow up on it. However, I don't think you can judge an entire storyline by the first episode. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael, do you think that that, la that last letter was actually from Rick Berman's relative? Or <laughs> what's going on? Well, what? this person needs to get out more. Thumbs right? up or <laughs> thumbs down, what do you say? Well, I think promise is the operative word. We keep getting sold a bill of good with these, you know, Borg. They right. started out promising us the Borg, and we found a dead Borg. Then they promised us the Borg again, and we found a band of quasi sorta of kind of Borg. And right. then they promised us the Borg again, because they claim they, you know, feel sorry for the fans that felt cheated, and then they come up with this thing where there's this big badass villain that's beating up the board. I'm this bad. is not the board. <laughs> no. okay. Robert, what do you, you say? Know, it's, it's, it's smacked of the 11th hour job to save the show that it really was, and I think that uh, it doesn't make any sense to create a villain or a big bully that has a big stick and not explain where he came from or why he's a bully. And they've ruined the Borg. They've taken the Borg. Every episode that they do the Borg, just sends them that much further into the ground as villains. And they were great when they were first introduced in Q-Who back in the second season of uh, Next Generation, and they've gone downhill from there. Let the Borg be the Borg. Mr. Logan, will this cliffhanger save this show? I don't think a cliffhanger can save it, but with what I know about next season, yes. which of course we're not allowed to talk about, it, it sounds like they could have some really good stuff going with the show that could get it back on track. Has it ever been on track, though? Never. Okay. No. Then, Voyager <laughs> has never been on track. It's never voyaged yeah, exactly. anywhere. Exactly. Donna, what do you think? Will it save the uh, Voyager franchise here? If they can live up to it. Right. Um, but as Michael pointed out, their track record is not that promising. So knock wood, because more good sci-fi is what we need. And unfortunately, right now, I don't think Voyage is there. Robert, what do you think? I think they should bring the ship home and have it fight on the front at the season finale or season beginning of Deep Space Nine. <laughs> because Deep Space Nine is the best Star Trek television series since the original. Speaking of which, <laughs> how about that DS9 cliffhanger? In my opinion, whatever it's worth, that was a show. That was a cliffhanger. Yeah. Probably the best that show's ever had. What Absolute, do you think, Michael? Absolutely. And I do not understand why. This is all done by Paramount. This is all done by the same bunch of people. How they could get it so right on one show and so wrong on another. It's weird. Yeah. Well, Deep Space Nine rocks the house. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got Ira Bear, who mm -hmm. is the co-executive producer now. Who It's clearly his show. Rick Berman's off doing his IMAX movies and his God knows what he's doing. But mm -hmm. Ira Bear and Robert Hewitt Wolf have the story editor have written together that episode, and they've written a number of episodes this season, including a two-parter um, in Purgatory's Shadow and uh, By Inferno's Light, the best two-parter that modern Star Trek has ever done, because that show is based out of character. Conflict yes. comes out of character. The next generation was always a bunch of archetypes that went through the motions of a plot, whereas Deep Space Nine has real character drama and conflict that creates plot. They've created a great secondary cast that they've really brought out. Everybody has something to do. Gul Dukat is now the greatest villain ever on Star Trek. Did you realize how many people were in that finale? I mean, so they had great. so I many mean, characters Everybody in that. was yeah. on that show, and they've done, everybody has great storylines. You know who they are, where they're yeah. going, why they're doing what they're doing, yeah. and that they took plot threads that they've been building on since the show began. And the it's, great thing yeah. about this also is that this isn't just like a, you know, first part of a two-parter. This is a, you know, a cliffhanger for an entire season. And you know, it's the which culmination. Is the that's years. true. Absolutely. Oh, thank goodness. Absolutely. Thank goodness. But they managed to make a guy who sits at the bar and never says anything mm -hmm. more interesting to me than the stud on Voyager. Oh, completely. 
That's a good Completely. Point. I mean, Morn is a good man. And mm -hmm. Worf and yes. Dax hooking up, the possible. I'm very excited. Oh, the I'm writer. I mean, you've got, you, you've got <laughs> lust in space. Right, oh, right. Ron Terrific Moore stuff. was never able to take the Deanna Troy Worf storyline of Next Generation mm -hmm. and make right. it happen. They've finally done it right with Dax mm -hmm. because, let's face it, Terry Farrell is the hottest babe ever to grace the, <laughs> the space lanes of Star Trek ever. Okay. You well, heard it here. Not going <laughs> to argue with that. And I, just, I love that new movie. I'm afraid uniform. I'll have to take myself out of that debate. Gotta <laughs> love her. All right. Don't touch that remote, folks. There's a lot more here in the war room, a lot more on season finales. It's all when SF Vortex continues. All right, welcome back to SF Vortex. We are still in the war room hashing out this season's cliffhangers with sci-fi universe genre critic Robert Meyer Burnett, TV guides Michael Logan, and Highlander the series writer Donna Leto. All right, one of the most unpredictable shows of the, of the year, of course, X-Files, as always. That season finale did not disappoint. Mulder dead. There's a better chance of a vanilla ice unplugged, let's face it. <laughs> and, what, and, and how about uh, Scully? Is she involved? <laughs> Michael Logan, what's going on? Oh, I don't buy any of the stuff they laid on us in that episode, but it sure was good. Well, Mulder's you know? got to be back. He's it getting sure $6 million They got, a movie, they got another series. Sense. They got a movie. They got, you know, right. they're not going anywhere. Donna, what would you think of the cliffhanger of X-Files? I thought it actually was predictable. I mean, I'm sitting there going, dead again? Wasn't it just last year they were blowing him up in right, the Anastasi like, Desert? I mean, can't they find another well to drill for this? Um, but Gee, then I saw somebody at the end of a cliffhanger. Well, I heard Tia Leone. I can't we'll get to that later. Would do that. I heard Tia um, <laughs> mad that she married Mulder's clone. You know, the David Bubbly <laughs> clone. I mean, he's, you know, who knows? I'll do the jokes if you don't mind, oh, Mr. Sorry, Burnett. No. Okay. But <laughs> but after I got over feeling a little cheated, um, then I wondered. Did you feel a little? Cheated? I felt a little cheated. Then I wondered what. What were the writers thinking? Did they want me to end the episode going, "Oh no, Mulder's dead. What's going to happen?" Mm -hmm. Or I took the next step and I'm sitting there going, so who's pulling the wool over Scully's eyes? What is the plot here? And once I latched onto that, I felt a lot better about it. But what about all the monsters and the satanic characters that aren't part of the mythology that they run into? Why doesn't somebody say, well, you know what? Okay, maybe there's not aliens, but there's a lot of other weird stuff. <laughs> Nobody ever admits to anything on that show, and it gets maddening after a while. You're like, I saw it. There is a shape-changing alien right. bounty right. hunter. Mr. Logan, time for your two cents. Go ahead. I still say I liked it, and I would like to say that Gillian Anderson was so good. Oh, she's terrific. Yeah. These last four episodes, so the whole, <laughs> she is <laughs> terrific. We're talking Emmy here, yes, folks. Yeah. But, you know, the whole cancer thing has been, to me, just so incredible. And if you did this on some other show, we'd all be kind of just bummed out because, you know, it's like not mm -hmm, something. But mm -hmm. this is so you know, intoxicating what right. they're doing with yeah. this and thing. It's insane. And they're so yeah. smart with this show that I, you know, I do believe you got to take the, give them the credit for having, you know, being a step or two ahead of us and okay. that, that this is going to pay off well. Here we go. Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, Donna. <laughs> First of all, can we clear this up? Is it Highlander or Highlander? We say Highlander. Okay, good. Now, what about that cliffhanger? What did you think of the cliffhanger, Michael Logan? The cliffhanger was excellent, but why did you kill Richie Ryan? This is like the that is equivalent of killing like... off Opie on the Andy Griffith exactly. show. Yeah, what were you, you guys know? thinking there? What we were thinking was the show is about Duncan McCloud and how mm -hmm. Duncan McCloud deals with events in his life. And we've killed off his good friends, we've killed off his lovers. How would he react to a situation? A, where Richie gets killed, you know, his best friend, his student, but we've done that. Mm -hmm. How about how does he react if he's the one forced to do the deed? Ah. Uh, Robert, what was your take on the Highlander I, cliffhanger? I liked it. I think, uh, like you'd said, good drama, Macbeth, Shakespearean oh. tragedy of epic proportion. But I had a problem with your, your evil. I mean, there's mm -hmm. just this nameless, faceless evil again. It could have been the, the aliens kicking the Borgs behind. But uh, again, I'm sure we'll find out next season, right? I say, un uh, yes. unlike possibly Voyager. But again, I'd like to see this, this evil explained. And let me ask you, was that really the Pazuzu statue from The Exorcist that you'd taken out of mothballs or something? No. no. It looked <laughs> just like Unless it. Unless they filmed The Exorcist <laughs> in France. Like How about this? Uh, Another did. sidekick mm -hmm. for Duncan MacLeod? Can you give us a hint? Um, not, not in season six. No sidekick. He's going to have to deal with this with himself. And he has other friends. You know, Joe Dawson will be there for him. Maybe Mythos will be there for him. Maybe Mythos won't be there for okay. him. It was left very nebulous in the last episode where they fall on, on the believing 
what Duncan saw is true of scale. Okay, next topic. How about a show like Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Rapidly becoming one of my favorites. Now they do a season ender. It's not really a cliffhanger, but it was terrific. Robert, what do you think? I dug it. They wrapped it up in a very nice fashion. I mean, they don't have to leave you wanting more. If they can tell a great story, they can end a great story. Right. I just think they need to be true to the characters, true to the premise of the show. That's what I want to see. And you and I have a thing for Buffy. Let's oh. see. Michael, what'd you think? I agree. And I'm getting to the point, I think we all are with these finales, that they got to be cliffhangers, they got to be these big, bloated, over-promoted things. And right. it's all about, you know, PR. That's what it is. And these guys went ahead and they just did a hell of a good bang-up last episode, and it really makes you want to be back next season. And that's, that's, that's what a finale that. should do. Do you agree but with it, that, Donna? I agree with that, but it left just enough for you to wonder what happens next year, because they did kill the master. Just Listen, like everyone we out there right now is wondering what's going to happen when Roger comes back from a commercial. i got to get out of here. <laughs> I want to thank my guests, Donna Letto, Robert Marvernet, and Michael Logan. SF Vortex will be right back, folks. Don't even think about changing that channel. See you in a minute.